nüüd suuremad teemad. Kristian Priil õnnestus nõõbist kinni saada maailma suurkujul ja visionääril taanlasest arhitektil Pjarke Ingelsil, kellega räägitakse kõrg arhitektuuri teemal. Sellele sekundeerimaks kohe juurde ka väga maine ja tõsieluline teema kortermajade renoveerimine. Kristian väises hetkel Eesti kompaktseima lahendusega renoveeritud kortermaja Koskla Seitse ja analüüsib muidki parema kodu teemasid. Welcome Bjarke to the challenge. So it's not your first time here probably. No, it's... Uh... We've we've been uh, coming here quite frequently over the last couple of years for the for the town hall. Mm -hmm. So how how come you ended up in uh, taking a part in this town hall competition? It was actually because it coincided with um, the complete meltdown of the global economy. In August 2008, we won the competition to design the uh, the National Bank of Iceland, and then one month later, all of Iceland went down. So we actually um, didn't have much to do and then there was um, one morning uh, a young girl came into the office. Uh, she was studying at the Copenhagen Business School and she wanted an internship uh, in the office and she was uh, uh, Estonian. She grew up in Estonia and moved to Denmark when she was 14. Uh, Daya was her name and she uh, fell, uh, she discovered the the tender for the Thailand Town Hall. It was in Estonian. So uh, since we didn't have anything to do, we, uh, we applied and uh, I think they shortlisted uh, uh, more than 100 offices. And we did this idea of the public village uh, that somehow breaks the big volume of the city hall down into a village of departments and frees the ground floor in a, what we call the public service marketplace. So it becomes a very inviting and, uh, and welcoming building. And we got the, we got to the second phase, and uh, and we finally won the competition. So it was like a bit like you know, as as all uh, big things in life, uh, uh, a series of almost accidents that uh, that led to uh, uh, to this opportunity. You do very much analyzing and it's like pre-work before you start draw the buildings. And if you look in your, at your website, every project starts with some schemes and stuff. Uh, what are those important things you should think before you actually start to design the building? I think in general it's um, different situations, different cities, different cultures, different climates have different uh, problems and have different possibilities. Uh, and um, you know we are interested in buildings that look different because they perform different. Um, so in a way, like before you can answer the question, you have to actually find out uh, what is the question that uh, would be most relevant to ask. Um, and uh, you can say, in a way, the architecture and the design work is very dependent on the amount of care that you put into it. I, I like to say that the difference between great architecture and not so great architecture is the difference between uh, careful and careless. If you don't care, you're just going to do something. And you might be very talented, but if you have a preconceived idea, you don't, you don't take the time to analyze the situation, to listen to the demands, to observe what's going on but you just do some kind of great idea and you put it in, you're gonna miss a lot of opportunities, you're gonna cause a lot of uh, problems. Whereas if you carefully uh, listen to the concerns and the demands and the criteria and the conflicts and the contradictions of each situation, you actually have the possibility to discover things you couldn't even imagine. Uh, and you end up um, uh, getting so much for free, you get so much energy from the analysis, um, you can say like once you stumble upon what is what is the big question, all you have to do is answer it. But if you don't know what the question is, then you can do all kinds of things and you'll just keep missing. So what are your suggestions uh, to the Tallinn to good development? Well, I think, I think of course we have, uh, we've worked uh, quite extensively on uh, creating a, a town hall. Uh, that uh, is indicative of a participatory post-Soviet democracy in the sense that it's transparent and inviting, uh, that the entire, uh, you know, the town square isn't just outside, it actually extends 
to the inside of the building as what we call the public service marketplace. And that even the city council becomes what we call the democratic periscope. Uh, that the ceiling is a giant uh, mirror, a sloping mirror that actually allows the politicians to look up like a periscope and see the, the entire city that they're making decisions about. But in return also invites the citizens to look into the tower and straight down at the city council to see uh, you know, if politicians are absent or sleeping or uh, what it is they do. So in that sense that there is this uh, invitation for exchange nested in the architecture. So, um, and I think uh, the town hall, uh, we've spent like the last couple of years adapting it to all of the specific requirements of the city, uh, that when it gets built, it would really be uh, a completely unique uh, example of, uh, of a sort of a participatory municipal democracy uh, that is very, very different from your typical sort of classic or, mm. or Soviet uh, government building. So how many compromises you need to do in your work? So it's one hand it's like freedom of thinking, thoughts and ideas and on the other hand there's some restrictions, rules, energy efficiency, very big issue nowadays. I think a compromise is, is when every uh, when every you know interest uh, is equally unhappy, uh, and I think what we try to find is, uh, you know, to explore synergies. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes the fact that there are different interests can actually even be uh, uh, beneficial to a, a project. Uh, one of the projects we've done in uh, Copenhagen is the mountain that actually uh, combines a parking structure with an apartment building. Uh, but because par parking wants big floor plates close to the ground, apartments want uh, daylight in views and outdoor space, maybe a garden where you can run out and play. And as a result, we turned the parking into a man-made mountain of cars, where all of the apartments become houses with gardens. So you have like a suburban lifestyle, a house with a garden, but with a penthouse view in the middle of the city. So suddenly by putting two very different things together, they can actually realize each, each other's dreams. And I think that's the true potential of cities, is that you know when you have a lot of different people with different age groups and gender and culture and language and you know, skin color and uh, uh, you know, sexual orientation, whatever, uh, and you put them together in, a, in the same space. There is, of course, an incredible potential for conflict, but also an incredible potential for synergy. Uh, and I think as architects, it's our job to try to discover and explore these synergies and, uh, and make them happen, like the mountain in, uh, in Copenhagen. Looja ja Telli on tandem, kelle ladusas koostöös sünnivad märgilise tähtsusega asjad. Mõtteid on õhus lendamas palju ja nende seas selle õige leidmine on üks tõsine töö. Tallinnas on see protsess läbi tehtud. Millised olid need vajadused muudatusteks, et kutsuti ellu Tallinna uue raekoja arhitektuurikonkurs? Meil oli kaks põhivajadust, nii et öelda, üks puht praktiline ja, ja teine linnaehituslik. Praktilise poole pealt siis see, et, et täna selle hetkel on linna keskseid ameti asutus, et pillutatud üle kesklinna laial ja enam kui 11. erinevasse asukohta. Ja selleks, et pakkuda klendile paremat teenust, oleks mõistlik need koondada tegelikult ju ühte suuremasse hoonesse. Ja kuidas konkurs kulges ja kuidas siis lõpuks jõudi sinna maa nii, et järgeingelt selle võitis? Konkurs kulges selles mõttes suurepäraselt, et, et me saime ju sellele konkursile üle kogu maailma ligi 90 tööd, mis oli ikkagi väga hea saavutus. Isegi sellel piigitööl oli võibolla vaja natukene pingutada või, 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 või no, süriil oli vaja ennast natukene veenda teda selle kümne tööulka valida, mis, mis teise vooru jõuaks, siis, siis teises voorusse idee kasvas, seda töötati rohkem läbi 
Ja, ja, ja seal oli juba Suriil mõne võrra lihtsam jõuda selle tulemuse, nii et, et, et valida just nimelt see töö teiste, ja see teiste seast esile tõsta. Nii kolmanda kui või teise kui kolmanda koha said Eesti arhitektid. Nii et tegelikult oligi vist niimoodi, et, et ma, ma nüüd sellest on ka mõnige aeg möödas juba sellest võistlusest, et ma täpselt arvu kui palju seal teises voorus tõid oli, kas oli kaheksa või üheks, sai mäletegi, aga, aga nende hulgas, kui ma õigesti mäletan, siis oli kaks tööd välja poolt Eestit ja üleend oli teiste arhitektide tööd. Mis seisus on siis see projekt täna ja mis lähi tuleb toob? No, praegusel hetkel on mitmed protsessid poolel, et, et detailplaneering, mis muulgas ka võimaldaks ehitusõiguse selle hoone püstitamiseks on lõppjärgus, aga tegelikult on paraleelselt tegelikult ka hoone projekteerimisega, nii et, et põhimõtteliselt on linnale lepingujärgselt üle antud projektimaterjalid sisuliselt teel projekti mahus. Et nüüd, mis selle hoone perspektiivist rääkides oluline on, on kahtlemata see, et, et tegemist on küllaltki ambitsioonika projektiga. Alguses peale oleme me lisaks sellele, et koondada linna valitsuse kõik inimesed ühte maia ja, ja luua neile täna päeva tänasega võrreldes paremat, kaasaeksemat siis töötamistingimused. Oleme soovinud ka seda, et, et, et see hoone oleks nii arhitektuurses, linnahituslikus kui ka ja insenertehnilises mõttes välja põiste vehitis Tallinna linnas. Kuna ta paikneb ju isene, sest Tallinna mere väravas kõik meie külalised sisuliselt saavad esimese kogemuse Tallinnast vaadates vana linna silu etti ja, ja tulevikus siis seda hoonet. Ja see tõttu on ka selle hoone eelarve vastav.